And I say, come over, come over, come on over, you'll say. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Town of Portland podcast. This is our episode number 32, and it's a bright and sunny day. Uh, In the studio with us is our first select woman, Miss Susan Bransfield, and as our uh, superintendent of school, Dr. Charles Britton is with us. So, And hopefully joining us in a little bit will be our Chatham Health Director, uh, uh, Russ Melvin. So uh, we got a whole lot going on, and uh, it's a gorgeous day outside. So, Susan, what do you got going? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, we have a lot going on. Uh, March is the uh, season of budgets. And next week, starting on March 16, which is a Tuesday, our listeners can join us on Zoom A, which you can find on our town website. Thank you, Dave, yes. for making sure that always works. And we're going to have a public hearing, and we're going to talk about things that we would like to do in our budget starting July 1. And I want to tell our listeners that something they're fully aware of, and that is COVID-19 has had a great impact on our community, our state, our nation over the last 12 months. And some of the things that you're going to hear about during our budget season are certainly in response to and also to make up for some of the things that have been lacking during COVID-19. And I'm happy that uh, my partner, our superintendent of schools is here today because uh, Charles and I talk quite a bit about how our community in particular needs to help our youngsters and our students in the Portland Public Schools. And I know Charles is gonna talk a little bit about that today. Um, And I wanted to point out some of the other areas in our town that need some attention. Um, So in addition to the schools, some of the things that I'm looking to talk about is how the town of Portland will implement the police accountability bill. It is a law that was passed by the state of Connecticut in 2020. And I anticipate, and honestly, I hope, that there will be some much needed amendments to that law that our legislators will pass on to the governor this 2021 season. And that includes some help to the communities to buy the body cams and the dash cameras that are required of all communities that have police. The police will have the body cams and the dash cams on them at all times, and they will also have to have that information stored. Mm -hmm. And the cost for that, to, to buy that equipment, if we buy it ourselves and we store it, for up to five years is how long, at, at right. least in the budget, mm-hmm. would be over $200,000. So that's $214,000. We're looking to say to the state, and I testified at the legislature this week, would you have the Department of Administrative Services look at how we can better buy, how we can buy in bulk the cameras, how they can be stored in a statewide fashion, that will be helpful to all the departments. You know, our police really value the ability to have these these body cams and the dash cams. It takes away all question as to what may have happened in a particular incident. And our residents and our citizens also want to have these cameras. It's something that really has been proven to be needed. It's how you pay for it, Dave. Sure, yeah, as well as that. And plus, it it gives a level of transparency. And we have to be smart about how we do these things. And I think it's important as a state that we definitely look at that. So that's one area. The other area I'm looking at is our senior citizens. Uh, In COVID-19, many of our uh, folks over 65 in particular have been subject to staying home staying safe, not interacting, having a lot of isolation and also trepidation as to this disease. Because as statistics have shown us, I believe it's 95% of all the deaths somewhere in that vicinity were to people 55 years of age and older. Mm -hmm. So this particular disease has really affected so many of us, and in particular, 
older citizens. And so I'm looking to have a full-time senior director to assist with some of the social, physical, and also recreational opportunities that are so important for our citizens. So with that, um, I, I'll stop there. There's a lot of other things in the budget too, but it's just to sort of pique people's interest, and I hope that they're able to join us at the public hearing and also at our workshops, which, Dave, you have on our website. And yes. people can access more easily than ever, I would say, if you have access to a smartphone or to a computer, or if you want to watch it later on YouTube or on um, the uh, public access TV. Channel, ch channel, channel 15. Channel 15. So yeah. um, lots to do this month. and. Sure. Um, the, the goal is to have a budget passed by the full Board of Selectmen in the beginning of April, and then it will go to a town meeting in the first Monday in May. The second Monday in May will be the referendum, mm -hmm. and I anticipate it will be a traditional go-and-vote referendum, and also hopeful that we'll be able to tell folks they can use absentee ballots as well. We've used absentees in the past for referendums, mm -hmm. and in checking with our town clerk, uh, Ryan Curley seems to indicate we'll be able to do that. So more on that maybe in our next podcast. Sure. But this month, do your research. Take a look at the needs that we have. See how the American Rescue Plan, which I believe the president is supposed to be signing today or tomorrow, and see how that 914000 that is coming to Portland for general government can be effectively utilized for maybe some of the capital items and some of the COVID-related needs that we have. The schools will be also getting over $900,000 that I know Charles and I and our chairwoman, uh, Sharon Peters, are going to be talking about and uh, planning ahead. Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate with our relatively new superintendent, is how well he's looking into the future and ensuring the health, welfare, and most importantly, the education of our children, not just today, but how he plans to do that going forward. So lots of good things happening, but lots of work as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, the COVID thing has is, is, is impacted the town in, in many ways, but um, some of that has been good. Uh, I think uh, obviously the, the the Zoom meetings have changed the uh, the landscape of, of, of public meetings, but uh, realistically, uh, we've been able to attract a lot more participants through the Zoom uh, than our normal, you know, uh, 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 budget workshops that we probably get you know twenty people on, you I know, agree. Uh, in person. So. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that has, uh, again, uh, improved the transparency in the town and I think uh, offered more participation and input uh, from our citizenry. And I'd like to continue with that methodology, even if we do go to a, what they're calling a hybrid version, where sure. some people may be in the audience physically present, but also people able to stay at their homes and watch the meetings mm -hmm. and feel comfortable doing so well you know we have the technology so I mean, it's there and uh to utilize it uh and i think that's the everyone's benefit yeah and thanks to you dave you've kept us up to date we try. it was seamless <laughs> uh thanks to charles and his predecessor philip the schools didn't skip a beat absolutely they, they've kept up with technology and it's to our betterment well, they, i want to thank you both they hit the ground running for sure all right charles you're in the barrel here all right so tell us what's happening in the district Sure. Well, uh, I'll just mention, you know, um, Susan just talked a little bit about being budget season. So I, I, I would probably want to start there. Um, I think that I have a, a, a great deal of, of respect for the, the leadership team and for Tom, who's our town business manager, and for Stephanie, our, our, our school side business manager. Um, this has been a, a, a challenging year on so many levels, n not the least of which is budget, right? That... Um, it's amazing that it was only a year ago that, you know, the world went sideways, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. Yeah. And, and the budget that was developed a year ago was not bu budgeted with any concept that a pandemic was coming, right? So literally the budget that was passed and voted on and developed was developed before we even heard the word Wuhan, right? Mm -hmm. True. And what we know from this year is that... <laughs> 
it would have been a very different budget mm-hmm. if we had developed it knowing that you know we would have hybrid and remote and have had to build an entirely new online school for 225 of our our kids it, it would have been entirely different and I, I would be lying to you if I said it what hadn't been a struggle <laughs> to figure oh, out sure. how to to pay for many of of the things that we've had to do and we've frozen our budget and we've reallocated and you know we've we've we clamped down on every penny that we spent and literally designed a new budget in real time mm-hmm. the the federal stimulus funds the one we got in the summer the first round that we got and now this one I, I just can't say how appreciative and how well I've been sleeping because of it. And and I know that there's there's been a lot of hard work that our legislators have done, and I can't thank them enough. And uh, I know Susan feels feels the same Absolutely. way. Absolutely. I would go so far as to say thank God for it. Yes. Um, we, you know, haven't had to ask our local taxpayers for supplemental. It's, you know, the, clearly been a, a, a lifeline that we needed. Um, sure. So now... In the context of you know what is hopefully being signed today, I don't want to count the chickens before they hatch, but I'm very ho- hopeful and you know would, would express to anybody that the, these funds are, are desperately needed to mm-hmm. keep us going. You know we have some work ahead of us to take a look at how long we have to spend these funds, how we maximize the value and, and offset the, the 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 local property tax base, but then of course fill in the gaps for our kids. You know we know they've missed a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, last year from March, and, and this year too. You know, fortunately, we're, we're one of the few districts in the state that is back fully now, and thank goodness for that. And mm-hmm. I read in the paper every day that other districts are struggling and coming back online You know, around April. We've been back now, and, and we've been doing great, and I'm knocking on wood. Or I haven't had any outbreaks in schools, and, yeah. and things are going well, but it's still different. Sure. You know, our, our kids haven't been able to go to proms and, yeah. you know, and, and you know, our music programs, and we haven't had plays and musicals, and, and our kids have missed a lot. Yes. Um, so I'm certainly, and I know I know Susan is too, looking to these funds for how we can start to make kids whole again, how we can we can bring those back into their lives this summer, hopefully, as as vaccinations get underway, and and how we can continue to work to 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 make up some lost ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think we're gonna you know impress the community with. Lots of the, the the programming and ideas that we're hatching now. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know, the students have not only suffered academically, but they've uh, they've suffered socially too. Sure. You know, yeah. and I think uh, rightfully so. It's uh, and you know, from the standpoint of uh, you know financial burdens, uh, you know, the town obviously has suffered, but each individual household has suffered. You know, and uh, you know, depending on your uh, you know, your, your parental situation, whether you got one working parent, two working parents, uh, no working parents, you know, I mean, it, it, it you know, it certainly uh, affects not only financially, but I mean, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a, a mental anguish and mental stress that goes along with that and so forth. So a lot of that, uh, the children don't see, but, yeah. uh, you know, to, to help that situation along uh, certainly is, is, would be welcomed. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing I want to touch on, uh, Dave, and it it certainly involves Charles, and that is the vaccination program Mm -hmm. that our Chatham Health District locally has been engaged with us on. And it started, um, it's probably a couple of months now that we've had the availability of the Moderna, and um, we haven't used Pfizer in the Chatham Health District, but Moderna has been available. Now the Johnson & Johnson yeah, vaccination Jan, Jan, yep. is available. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the help of our library, our senior center, our hotline, uh, our citizens, 75 and older, were first vaccinated at the high school. Um, there was some opportunity here at our high school. And then at our senior center, there was a vaccination clinic for 55 and older, as well as a 65 and older at St. Clement's. So we had a business involved. And then the second round occurred uh, at the high school, at the senior center, and St. Clement's will have their second uh, vaccination coming up this later this month. And now um, we're into the schools being vaccinated. And I, I, think, I think the public is getting a real comfort factor that our seniors, who, as I said earlier, are so vulnerable to the the disabling effects of this disease, and now our youngsters and our teachers that are out 
with our communities, with our families, are getting vaccinated. And that is critical as well. And maybe, Charles, you want to talk a little bit about that importance for our schools? Oh, yeah. And, and I wish Russ would have were I, I heard he was going to call in today. He's amazing. Yes. I mean, he, he is just just such a, a good person to work with and, and so thoughtful. So um, last Saturday, we had our first vaccination clinic for teachers. Um, I got mine Saturday, the, right. the Johnson & Johnson. It was a rough day Sunday, I'm not going to lie to you. It was, um, yeah. that's, a, that's a tough one. Mm. Mm. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, mm -hmm. uh, is the second one um, that our teachers, not just teachers, our faculty, staff, bus drivers, food services workers, paraprofessional, mm. anybody who works with the schools is going to get their first round of the Moderna Friday. And then April 9th is the, the, the second, second round. Yep. Um, so uh, we're, 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 thank goodness for it, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, now, what's interesting to me is, is um, lots of parents are now saying, okay, well, hey, the teachers are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. you know, can we have a prom? <laughs> you know, can, we, can we have um, fans at our, our indoor basketball game? Mm -hmm. my, my answer to that is you have to be patient a little bit longer. Right? The, the, the sector rules are being um, amended, but it's, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. And you know, we don't want, obviously, this, this to continue to spread. You know, we want work. Now, what I'm hearing from Russ, and um, again, if he were here, he would give us you know, a more um, credentialed uh, answer to this, but I think we're going to see maybe by May that the vaccination availability is going to be exceeding the demand, which means that it's going to open up and everybody's going to be able to yep. get it. Sure. What's most exciting to me about that is that the, um, the authorizations are for 16 and older. Mm -hmm. Right. So, hey, these are our sophomores and juniors. Mm. If all right. of our sophomores and juniors are vaccinated, let's have a prom. Right. Sure. Let's right. have an outdoor Wonderful. graduation. Mm. Yes. Right. right. So, so there's, it's going to start to happen. Just everybody needs to just be patient a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the, the only thing that, that I'm concerned about and aware of is that our children pre-K through ninth, 10th grade, there isn't a childhood vaccine yet. I, I know it's in development. I believe Pfizer's working on, on that. And that's really going to be where we get that herd immunity and can mm. end the social distancing and get the masks off. Sure. But that, that what, what I'm hearing is not likely to happen until summer fall. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, those, those trials for those vaccines are, are, are coming soon. So we've taken our first huge step. Mm -hmm. Our 16 and older students will be the next huge step. And then the slide into home base is going to be when the childhood vaccines are here yep. and, and we're done. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing, too, is that, you know, people, you know, from uh, a, a mental standpoint, now, now we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, right. okay? And, uh, you know, realistically, the masks work. The mm -hmm. social distancing works. So, you know, um, you know, be patient with that and be vigilant with that. We have to. And, uh you know, we'll be able to get to that point where we get herd immunity and, uh, like you say, and, you know, uh, return to uh, uh, normality, uh, what that's going to be. You know, it probably will be a little bit different, but, you know, yeah. hopefully we can get back to that. And the word has to be now, to, and, and, and I, I, I know I've asked parents to be flexible and patient for a long time now. Just give us a little longer. Sure. I, I think I've got to ask our, our parents and our students who desperately want proms and outdoor grad, uh, graduations and and dances and and to be back together sure. we're going to get there Let, yeah. let's not blow it now yeah you know i'm going to put a date out. give me another eight ten weeks yep. and 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 then we're going to be able to meaningfully have these conversations sure and uh you know from a sports standpoint ciac is now um Okay, the uh, spring baseball and yeah. spring uh, track, uh, golf and, and track and tennis. track, and so which is um, that's going to help from the social aspect yeah. too. And my my goal with that is I know we haven't been able to have parents at indoor basketball games, mm -hmm. um, but you know outdoor, we're getting back to it. You're yeah. going to be able to come watch the softball and and you know we're going to it's going to it's going to get better. Yeah, yeah, especially you know for the seniors that that are you know, finishing up their, their, their high school uh, days and so forth, that it's, uh, they're missing a lot. They really are. So uh, anyway, but that's, that's great. And, you know, also from the standpoint of uh, our town, we're still moving along. And I know uh, uh, 
the uh, the board of selectmen have been working very hard as far as in relation to you know developing the budgets and you know working that uh, that out but uh, i think it has been you know as as the uh, this is, I think, daylight saving time coming up this That's weekend. Right. So yes. the, the days yes. are going to get longer. Right. So yeah. Yeah. it's going to bring ahead. <laughs> yes, exactly. Lose, lose the hour. That's not, it's, it's, uh, exactly. The tough, the, the tough know. Monday is coming. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. So anyway, but that's uh, that's great. Um, all right. Um, I think, uh, I, like I said, Russ is at a clinic. Uh, right. I think now. So he was. Uh, going to try to call and it doesn't look like he's going to make it in but that's that's okay and again uh you know kudos out to russ melman and the chatham health district and their whole staff and and so forth and being able to work with the towns and and not only developing the clinics but developing those uh those uh testing uh clinics sure. that we had at the senior center uh right. so that, yeah that sort of... the, the drive-through that the community health center set up uh courtesy of working with russ melman i mean those worked out very very well and you know, I think it's it's certainly eye-opening for all of us to know how important local public health is. Mm -hmm. Public health is so important, and now I think we each know and understand the importance of it. So, you know, as you said a few minutes ago, some good things have come out of this pandemic. We've learned a lot about ourselves and a lot about how these teams certainly are the approach to getting things done. Um, and the good weather's coming. We'll all be outside much more. Uh, I know I saw one of the owners of our golf courses in town, uh -huh. and they're opening in uh -huh. another, I think he said another week. Oh, uh -huh. darn, I want to go this weekend. Right. <laughs> well, uh -huh. you might be uh -huh. weather, weather dependent, uh, Charles. You might get your wish. Um, so they're, they're looking to open up. Uh, they're looking to put out um, certainly uh, one of these golf courses going to have a patio where there'll be more mm -hmm. opportunity for people to be outside and, and be able to um, – eat and drink. And then we also have some new restaurants that are coming on Main Street. The old Portland restaurant is reopening under new management. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a new brewery that's right next to the Aragoni Bridge, just under the, in the industrial park area. Yes. And uh, Dairy Queen is going to be opening up, we hope, this spring. So there's a lot of great things going on. And uh, we are grateful, as, as Charles said, we thank God that we've come through the whole year and we also take pause and say we're sorry those who were sick yes. and sorry for those that have lost loved ones. And we don't forget them. And mm. I think as we go on, we'll need to memorialize yes. uh, the suffering and, and the deaths that have occurred and remember such good things that people have done for us and with us um, during this this, uh, this whole year. Sure. You know, and I think people, you know, as, as the days are getting longer, the nice weather is people are utilizing, uh, you know, their outdoor activities. I know the airline trail is getting a lot of use. The, the new park out there is always uh, seem to have uh, people walking around, kids playing. So, uh, that's great. And you mentioned the brewery. I, I, I was able to, uh, uh, visit the brewery Saturday night. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, so, uh, if you, haven't get a chance uh, stop down and and see that uh, they got great hot dogs, <laughs> hot dogs in the hallway. <laughs> so Wonderful. you go from Wonderful. there. So all right, all right. I think uh, that about wraps it up for our episode number thirty one. Um, and uh, I'm your host Dave Kosminski. We are in the Town Tech Educational Podcast Studio at Portland High School, which is uh, in this pandemic has getting been getting a fair amount of use. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. And so forth, and we certainly do appreciate you guys coming up and uh, using the facility and uh, enjoying it. And uh, I tell you, it uh, it really is uh, uh, a nice asset for the town. So that's great. So so on behalf of all of us here at the uh, town of Portland and the Town Tech Educational Podcast Studio, uh, remember stay home, stay safe, socially distance, and above all, wear your mask. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski. Please tune in every week for new and relevant conversations about the town of Portland. You can find us at portlandct.org or at YouTube forward slash town of Portland. And now, wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please consider subscribing and sharing with friends. This podcast was produced by the Town Tech Educational Partnership Program, which is a partnership between Portland High School and the Portland Town Hall. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or organization, check out towntech.org forward slash podcast to learn more.